Hey guys, welcome back to my Sword Art Online Reviews. This is going to be a weekly basis now. And this is of episode 15, uh, the Alfheim arc, where creepers who wear glasses uh, take advantage of girls in a coma, and where cousin and sister's cousin relationships are a-okay. So overall, this episode uh, was really foreign to me because uh, we don't see Kirito in the virtual world, we see him in the real world, and we find out, um, or, well, we see him practice kendo with his cousin's sister, technically his cousin, and um, we learn that what you learned in the virtual world can carry over to the real world, which I found pretty interesting and amazing, really. Uh, it never even crossed my mind if that was a possibility, and um, something to consider is is it limited to swordsmanship and weapons can it be applied to other skills that there are various skills in the game it can it be applied to other things such as um, the listening skill or the appraisal skill etc you know listening would be interesting I think just pick up on people in the real world pretty cool so that's something to ponder about and let me know what you think about that um, anyway, we learn that not everyone is out of Sword Art Online, including Asuna. There's about 300 people stuck in the game, still, and uh, Kirito finds Asuna's whereabouts. She's in a hospital, goes to visit her, and we are immediately introduced to two new characters. <clears throat> uh, one of them is Asuna's father, uh, who has like a CEO position in a division of the Sword Art Online game, something along that line. The other person is Creeper McFace, and we soon learn that Creeper McFace is taking advantage of Asuna and plans to marry her while in a coma. What? Like, how low can an individual be that you're going to take advantage of someone like that? That's just plain scary to me. So, <clears throat> anyway, we, we, uh, also learn that Kirito is limited to, as to what he can do because this creeper can basically he's in control of the Sword Art Online servers uh, since the original company went bankrupt the servers transferred to someone else to take care of them so he could pull the plug at any moment and essentially kill 300 people so Kirito heads home and he's troubled as to what to do and his cousin consoles him when he gets home and also about the cousin relationship you might have noticed. You might have noticed it. I can understand when, you know, two siblings uh, or relatives have a strong love and profound respect for one another. I get that. But it seems that this cousin is just genuinely in love with Kirito or has a crush on him or something along those lines. And uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, some kind of soap opera or something. But anyway, I still enjoy the series. I don't give a crap. That's not going to ruin it for me. But, um... Anyway, the episode comes to an end with Kirito getting an email from McGill. And in the email, it shows a picture of Asuna um, behind some bars or you know, behind a window or something. And so, essentially, McGill made it out and sent him this. And uh, this next episode kind of leads us to believe that Kirito is going to get back into the game somehow and uh, help rescue her from wherever she is. Um, so that's pretty much how it ends there. So now what I'm going to do is leave you guys with a question because I want the audience to get involved. And my question is, do you think that the Creeper intentionally told Kirito uh, about his plans because he has an underlying plan? to, say, trap Kirito in the virtual world somehow, or is it just because he's an asshole? So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. I hope you enjoyed this review slash discussion. Leave your thoughts down below. If you like the video, like it, favorite it, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel up to. I'd just uh, like to hear others' people's opinions. So thanks for watching, and take care.